The Caribbean Sea evokes images of bright sunshine, white sandy beaches, and blue sea. The rich blue blanket hugs the shores of dozens of island nations, including the member countries of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, the OECS. The ocean is of particular importance to the OECS member states, whose ocean space is their largest natural asset, measuring more than 70 times their landmass. The maritime jurisdiction of the member states of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, which is significantly larger than their land jurisdiction, is a primary asset to support sustainable growth and development through a blue economy. For the OECS region, a blue economy offers tremendous opportunities for sustainable social and economic growth and improved coastal and marine ecosystem health. Benefits include improved livelihoods and jobs from maritime activities and the sustainable use of ocean resources, and from intrinsic non-market services that are often harder to quantify. Given that ocean resources are so critical for blue growth and sustainable development for each of the OECS member states, it is clear that the ocean space needs to be well governed. This, in turn, will bring new blue job opportunities to further enhance and develop existing sectors, while exploring emerging markets such as renewable energy, maritime transportation, seabed mining, and biotechnology industries. For all these reasons, and especially because there is often competing demand for ocean resources, good ocean governance is critical. Good governance, according to the United Nations Development Programme, is the software that makes the hardware of state agencies and legal frameworks function effectively. Ocean governance is a foundational requirement for a blue economy, and that involves all stakeholders, including private sector and the civil society at large, and seeks to build consensus on how ocean resources should be used, when, and by whom. In line with this, ocean governance in the OECS is framed in an integrated indigenous island system management framework, spanning the highest ridge to the outer limit of the exclusive economic zone for effective implementation of obligations and national priorities across all sectors. To improve ocean governance as the region transitions to a blue economy, the OECS heads of government mandated and approved the Eastern Caribbean Regional Ocean Policy ECROP, and the Strategic Action Plan SAP, including very strong and clear priorities for strengthening coordination. At the regional level, for example, ocean governance, we've established the, the OECS Ocean Governance Team. And that has been a, a really a brilliant example of bringing together um, uh, agencies and competencies in the area across the subregion to dialogue and to, to work together and to facilitate um, the work in the, in the area, um, as well as to pool our capacities together um, as a region. This regional multi-sectoral approach has resulted in more accessible resources and information for regional partners and increased dialogue among all stakeholders in the various islands. But there's still some way to go. The Caribbean Sea is an extremely valuable resource, particularly for island states and territories. It is a part of the Caribbean large marine ecosystem and the North Brazil Large Marine Ecosystem, together known as the Caribbean Large Marine Ecosystem, or the CLME+. As part of the 10-year politically endorsed CLME Plus Strategic Action Program, the Integrated OECS Ocean Governance Program embraces, elaborates, and provides for effective regional coordination, protection of the marine environment, sustainable fisheries harvesting, management of reef and pelagic ecosystems, and responding to transboundary pressures in the CLME+. 
Caribbean economies are essentially blue. That is, they are dependent on ocean resources. Current indicators suggest that ocean resources in the Caribbean generate nearly half a trillion US dollars annually across four key sectors. While up-to-date fisheries data is largely a work in progress, industry stakeholders from boardroom to boathouse agree that there have been noticeable decreases in both catch volumes and the size of individual species. Catches have decreased in volume and size over the years. All right, and I think it can be attributed to a number of things. Environmental, man-made, weather, climate change, and so forth, a number of things. The root causes of these phenomena are being actively investigated by researchers in the region. One of the key factors identified is the dreaded sargassum blooms that invade the island. It doesn't just affect people, it also affects others in the marine environment like your seagrass beds. When the sargassum is on the water surface floating, it actually blocks the sunlight and so seagrasses need the sunlight for growth and so that kills the, the seagrass. Now seagrass is integral to linking mangroves with coral reefs. And so when the reefs don't get that, um, silt, um, that the silt being withheld by the seagrasses and the mangroves, they're now smothered. And so it looks like it's just affecting human beings, but it affects the whole marine environment. And Mother Nature doesn't stop there. OECS member states and their marine ecosystems have been impacted by major and moderate volcanic eruptions and direct hits from some of the most powerful Category 5 Atlantic hurricanes on record. That could have a devastating impact on the marine ecology and economies of these small island developing states and territories. For example, in 2017. Antigua and Barbuda, I think, was ranked number four in the world in terms of um, natural disasters from 1970 to about 19. Uh, 97, I think. I don't remember, but most of the OECS were in the, that top tier. If you look mm -hmm. at the, the, the yeah. category and types of hurricane, you think about Lois, Rogers, Hugo. Um, while we've actually quantified a lot of the damage to infrastructure and you know uh, lowering the, the GDP, what is not properly documented is the damage itself to the ecosystem yes. and where they are. You think it takes centuries to have a fully developed coral reef, uh, an entire reef basically turned yeah. to coral level in one night. The marine environment around Montserrat has been completely changed over the past 25 years. Actually, more like 32 years. We, in 1989, we had the event of a direct hit from Hurricane Hugo. And then after Hurricane Hugo, which in my process of diving, seen many of the reefs broken down and a lot of the turtle grass beds being completely swept away. The other major pressure on marine systems is a result of human activity and is seen in the expanding tourism industry and the myriad of issues associated with cruise ships and yachting. From waste disposal, sewage and ballast water, to overcrowding, tourism infrastructure and service industries, the lure of the Caribbean's sun, sand and sea is putting pressure on the marine environments. For example, um, you may have um, our largest yachting area, which is Rodney Bay and then you have quite a few yachts that, that comes in and those yachts anchor within, within that bay. And um, there are no holding facilities ashore to accommodate in terms of the liquid waste coming from those vessels. Naturally, you will have liquid waste from a vessel that's anchored for a number of, day, for a number of days. And it goes back to the lack of legislation. Pollution, of course, is a huge concern for everybody. We have oil pollution, we have um, waste 
um, human waste pollution and other waste from on board the boat. A lot of these boats now are zero discharge, so they don't discharge anything into the ocean. But a lot of boats still use the old systems. In this marina, we can pump out anything. One of the reasons that we did have this environmental levy um, that came that came onto stream, a survey was done, and uh, we had a, we had a study done, and that study showed that the, our visiting guests were willing to pay to protect these islands. So a lot of the tours that we get, like I said, they want to protect these islands because they see the benefit of having clean waters because they want to dive, they want to fish, and the fish that you're catching, you want to make sure that they're, that they're healthy and they're clean. So I think that a lot of the tours that we get are very well educated. But that's only one aspect of yachting and shipping, as the Caribbean is a vibrant hub for trade, with barges and ferry services engaged on voyages within the region and internationally. This presents its own areas of concern for policymakers. If you are going to enforce effectively, you really need legislation. The problem I have, particularly in Sinti for me, is in the fact that um, the, I don't think you are getting the, the, the real specials in terms of drafting maritime legislation. In order for everybody to understand the consequence of yachting, boating, ocean blue economy, there needs to be data capture. That data has to be captured in a way that is readable by the technocrats, the bureaucrats, the politicians, the people, the businessmen, so that we can all understand what's actually happening and see it in an in a, in a understandable, readable way. The marine sector, I think, is really important. I cater for the 65-foot class boat, mostly. The contribution to the economy that, one, you have employment, you have through traffic, a lot of individuals with the, in the tourism sector, they say they would not have purchased bigger boats if they didn't have a facility like this to secure them in events of bad weather. We're the only one in the Federation who able to lift up big boats. We can lift all the ferries that are here. Two years ago, we serviced 11 boats for the Moorings Charter Company. This year, we had 50 boats because the service they had with the 11 boats the, the year before was incredible. Now that is now going to make Sinkits a hub for uh, moorings. Now that being a hub, like St. Thomas, like St. Martin, the, the turnaround, I mean the immigration at the airport who come, commenting on it, you know, they, 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 have seen, they haven't seen so many people coming in back and forth. Governments across the region know that they cannot afford to be left behind in terms of sustainable growth from their marine resources and the increase in the inherent economic activity. The ECROP and its Strategic Action Plan, which is structured on 12 principles, provides a robust, effective ocean governance framework. These principles are island systems management, ecosystem-based management, environmental stewardship, sustainable development, public and private participation, use of sound science and best practice, precautionary approach, environmental liability, access and benefit sharing, transboundary cooperation, gender equality and inclusivity, and good governance. The development and implementation of national ocean policies and strategic action plans aligned to the ECROP has started and it's already becoming evident. The sub-region, OECS, is one of the most beautiful natural places on Earth. It would be good, uh, my vision is that we all could um, pull our resources together, come up with some sound policies in the OECS, and uh, find ways of supporting each other to ensure that whatever the standards are, are high standards in one state of the OECS, represent the high standards in other states. I would not wish to see an imbalance in terms of our development. I want oysters to rise like one ship as the tide rises. Development comes with a cost, and, and whatever you're doing in terms of economic development, you're going to have something that's going to suffer. 
I think both organizations, OECS and, and, and I must say the, the other one, of course, uh, they have been very helpful or useful in, in, in helping us. Um, and other, other, other agencies, of course, outside of the, Car of the Caribbean, because, because we're UK, we do have other, get other assistance from other, other agencies. But I think they are, they are they're very helpful, they're very useful in what we're doing in terms of advancing our, 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 fishing, um, our fishing industry. Um, what we really need from them is to introduce some education in terms of introducing new techniques. Mm -hmm. And not just only come and say this, but help us to get to a level where we can further develop our fisher folks and they reach a level where they can in fact benefit um, significantly from the ocean without, without um, destroying it. These are only a sample of the many issues that impact on the marine resources of the Eastern Caribbean. However, there are other threats such as climate change, sea level rise, coastal erosion and invasive alien species that pose threats to the region's marine ecology and biodiversity. Pollution is one of the major transboundary issues impacting the Caribbean region. Countries of the OECS are particularly vulnerable as small islands, given their dependence on tourism, shipping and fisheries. Our recent United Nations Environment Programme's State of Pollution Report confirmed that untreated sewage, plastics and agrochemical runoff negatively impact human health and the environment. To address marine pollution, different agencies and sectors must work together. UNEP, through the Cartagena Convention Secretariat, will continue to support the OECS Commission and other regional partners to implement the Strategic Action Program of the Caribbean Large Marine Ecosystem, CLME plus SAP. It's a land and sea partnership. You have to keep the land healthy in order for the sea to be healthy. You have to ensure waste are stayed on land and basically recyclable and recycle in a proper and safe manner that does not enter the sea, cause any contaminants of the ocean, destroy our corals, cause we are losing corals on a very fast rate with all these high temperatures. So we gotta work in terms of keeping our coastal clean, keep our coastal defenses um, up as possible, get more into soft core um, sea defense, planting back our mangroves, maybe more different types of trees. Among the OECS countries, Montserrat is probably the most unique in its experience on ocean governance. Apart from issues relating to its territorial sea, limited port facilities and constrained tourism industry, volcanic eruptions which impact marine ecosystems present extraordinary challenges. As you to Montserrat, um, our coastline is, is volcanic, yes, and it's, you're actually looking at three nautical miles. As you go three nautical miles, you go into basically an abyss. It's something like Cayman is something like Bermuda. So we have a complex situation here in Montserrat where it's unlike any other island in the Caribbean because of all these detrimental things that have happened to our fishery and not having any estuaries or mangrove um, growth ponds or swamps for the juvenile species to be spawned or grow up it also helps to diminish our stock of fish stock on, around Montserrat. Almost a quarter century after Soufriere's catastrophic eruption, the air on the southern part of the island is thick with microscopic dust particles, and any period of rainfall readily washes tons of volcanic ash onto the island's reefs. It's further proof of the importance of the work in the OECS in championing integrated regional and national mechanisms for ocean governance. The blue economy is more than just a modern catchphrase for many islands. They have been practicing these principles for many years. What is important now is that today's plans ensure conservation and preservation for the future. I think it's extremely important. Um... Each island can learn from each other, whereas our, um, our physical space individually may be different, but we're all surrounded by the same body of water. 
so there are best practices to be learned from each island then there there may be not maybe i'm sure there are um, initiatives that have been implemented that have worked in a certain island and can be used as a blueprint for another island the eastern caribbean regional ocean policy and strategic action plan and the national ocean policies and strategic action plans aligned to it provide an overarching integrated framework for sustainable growth and development by utilizing ocean resources of the member states of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States. Together, the Eastern Caribbean Regional Ocean Policy and Strategic Action Plan and the National Ocean Policies and Strategic Action Plans aligned to it provide the basis for implementing blue economy mandates in the revised Treaty of Bastyr and by extension related international instruments to which the member states subscribe.